It's no secret that I love all things knightly, so when it comes to Warhammer 40,000, the Imperial Knights are by far my favourite faction, and over the years I've amassed quite a moderate collection of the nobles of House Griffith. There are lots of rumours that I'm obsessed with this faction, rumours I can neither confirm nor deny, but what I can confirm is that it doesn't take very long when you're playing with an Imperial Knight army to realise that sometimes your opponent doesn't have the best game experience against them because it's just a small amount of really large figures. So for a long time, what I've been doing is trying to work out ways to represent the household infantry that I've talked about in the codexes, so that on the battlefield my opponent's got more of a variety of targets they can get engaged with and have a better time essentially. And I've done lots of kit bashes for this over the years, but I think at long last, Games Workshop have released the perfect miniature for this straight out of the box, and in this video, I'm going to paint one in the colours of House Griffith. So why do I think the Solar Auxiliar Infantry are the perfect troops to represent Imperial Knight household troops? And well, this actually goes back to one of the initial kickoff meetings I had back in my time in the studio at Games Workshop when we were looking at Imperial Knights. Here we were told explicitly they're not meant to be Bretonians in space. They're not just medieval knights walking around in sci-fi gear. Instead, what they're supposed to reflect is more sort of Victorian style gear or Prussian ability style equipment, that sort of thing. So what we're looking at is elaborate weaponry, dueling sabers, really fancy heraldry, all that kind of thing really. And these minutes have that in spades right down to the weapons. You've even got things like dueling pistols for your sergeants, so to my mind they're absolutely perfect. What's more is their armour looks like Victorian diving gear, so even better, and it's laid out in such a way that actually reflects the colours that appear on Imperial Knight armour as we can place it in the same sort of positions, and you'll see what I mean as we get going here. Now the only minor conversion I've done, if you could call it that, is just to remove the solar auxiliar symbol on the gorget of the armour. This I just lightly filed away, then built the miniature as usual from there, and what we're going to do is paint it very much like an Imperial Knight here. So as I'm doing House Griffith, I've chosen for an undercoat to use some Zandri dust spray, so a good starting point for the bone white armour, and what I'm going to do is start out with the undersuit beneath it so I can be rough, then neaten up with the armour later on. Now to reflect the scheme that I've got on my Imperial Knights, which are dark silver for the skeleton underneath the armour, here I want to go for a near black. So I'm going to use some Death Reaper for this, and to apply it, what I'm going to go for is a rough base coating brush. So I have here a medium base coat brush here from Citadel. What we're going to do is, as usual, thin the paint down with just a touch of water on the palette so it's nice and smooth, just being careful not to overdo it, and with that prepared, it's time to start painting that undersuit. Now whilst I'm doing this, I'm not too concerned about other details which we're going to block in as we go along, but I am going to try and keep it to a minimum of catching it on the bone armour here, just to make it a little bit easier to base coat that bone colour later on, but if I do catch it a little bit then, well it's not really the end of the world. I finished base coating that undersuit, so now it's time to move on to base coating the armour. And as I mentioned earlier, what I want to do is loosely copy how it appears on an actual suit of Imperial Knight armour. So that means I'm going to mostly be painting it bone white, but with a few of the colours put on there too. So we'll start out with that bone white, and for this I'm going to go for some Vampire Fang, and for the application here, I need to be quite neat. So I've switched to a size 1 brush from Artisopus, and if you wanted to go for a Citadel brush, something like a medium layer would be fine for something like this. And all you got to do when you're doing this sort of step, make sure the paint's nicely thinned down on your palette, and then start blocking that armour in as neatly as possible whenever you get close to the black that we've got. So for example, if we're painting the breastplate around here, what I'm going to do is just neatly apply it but as I get close to the arm here, just take my time making sure not to drift onto that black. And there we go, I finished base coating on there that bone white for the armour plating, so now we can move on to adding in the heraldic colours of House Griffith here, which is going to be the red and the blue. Now for the red, I'm going to use some Sanguine Scarlet, and for the blue parts, I'm actually going to go for some Stegodon Scale Green, so a bit of an unusual choice here, but that is the colour that I used back in my larger nights. But we'll start out with the red, so Sanguine Scarlet, and to apply it, I'm going to stick to the same brush for the base coat here, and there's just particular areas that I'm going to pick out with this colour, reflecting what appears on a larger suit of knight armour. So for example, on the shoulder, I'm going to do the back halves of each one. So if I'm looking at this one here, so what I've got to do is just look for the central ridge, which we can use that little bolt at the top there as a guidance, and then just start applying it in a downward motion, gradually moving towards the middle, so there like that, and then just fill in all the area that's behind it. It's going to be the same on the other side too. And there's also on the knight armour some red on the legs. I'm going to do the same thing here on the inside just here. And when doing this one, there's actually a convenient ridge down the centre to help guide that central line to make sure it's nice and straight. 
With that red on there, it's then time to move on to the blue, and for this I'm using some Stegodon Scale Green. And there's two areas for this. One's going to be this part of the shoulder, again just making sure we get that lined up so it's nice and central, but then it's also going to be this knee pad right here. And there we are, all the main heraldic colours for House Griffith are blocked in. Now obviously if you're doing a different knight house here, you'll want to just sub in those colours for ones that match your actual knights. But with that done, we can now move on to all the smaller details that still need to be base coated here. What I'm going to do is start out with various brown details, and for this I picked out some Noble Steel Brown, so nice warm brown for this one. And with that done, it's then time for the metallics. So I'm going to start out with silver, with some Surcoat Silver, then some bronze, and here I'm going to be using some Spartan Bronze. But first of all, I'm looking to the brown details, so I've got some Noble Steel Brown for this, and to apply it, I've decided to switch to a slightly smaller brush for a bit more control. I've gone down to my size zero here, but any sort of medium to small size brush will be fine for this. What I'm going to do is base coat all the leather straps with this colour. So around his back, we've got these little pouches and his belt. So I'm going to be looking for areas such as that. Also decided to paint his boots in this colour as well. So down here. There's one other thing I want to paint in brown, and that's going to be some parts of the rifle to give the appearance that they're made out of wood. And so it's quite antiquated to really fit the theme of this army. So I'm looking at things such as the stock around here. With that done, it's then time to move on to the silver. So here I'm using some Surcoat Silver, and this is going to be for all the technical equipment at this stage. So we're looking at things such as seals here on the armour, armoured cables, details on the rifle, everything like that. And finally, using some Spartan Bronze, I'm going to start picking out a few fine details on the miniature just to break up the silver a little bit and also pick out decorations. So for example, some details on the rifle, including the base of the stock down here, but also looking for large areas of silver, such as all the machinery around here. And I'm just going to pick out a few select details just to add a bit of interest to this area. And there we are, all the base coats are applied, and you can see the sort of small details here I've used that bronze on just to pick them out and break up those areas. And there's one thing I haven't painted yet, which is actually halfway down the rifle, that's these coils just there, because my plan is to paint them glowing blue later on, because I think that's going to be a nice little representation there to show that this is actually a really high quality LAS rifle, because night houses have all sorts of great tech in them, I want to represent them that way in this miniature. But with all those other base coats colours done now, what we can do is apply a wash to the miniature to get some shading, and in this case I want a dark brown wash because that's going to work really nicely for all the three heraldic colours we've got on there. So what I'm going to use is some battle mud wash and to apply it I'm going for a large brush because I plan to paint this all over the miniature. So here I have a medium shade brush from Citadel. And with this sort of thing all you need to do is just load up a really good amount on your brush then pick a starting point and just start applying it to the miniature working it into all the little details as you go along. Now at first it'll look quite heavy but as you keep moving it around and distributing it around the miniature you can see it really settles down to a nice strength and this way we get that shading on the model. Just make sure that you don't allow it to pull up too much in any one area, particularly on parts that stick out such as the end of the rifle. For example if I put quite a lot on here and it dries like that it's going to look horrible. So when you're doing this sort of thing just use your brush like a sponge to soak away excess paint and redistribute it around the miniature. And whilst you're at it with a light colour scheme like this it's always a good idea to try and keep the wash quite light on the armour plating because whilst we are going to have to layer it later to clean it up, the less that's on there, the quicker that stage is going to be. Anyway, once it's painted all over the miniature, it's time to let it dry, and at this sort of application what I'd look for is around about 45 minutes before moving on to the next stage. The wash is now dry, so it's time to move on to the next phase of painting the model, which is going to be to do that layering to clean things up. I'm going to start out on that bone armour as it is the most important part to layer here. So the idea now is to return to the original colour that I used. In this case it's going to be Vampire Fang, and to apply it, I'm going to go for that size zero brush, that small to medium one, which I think is a good size for the sort of thing I'm doing here. Of course, if you're doing this on your own miniatures, just change as you feel comfortable with. But once you've got your layer ready and thinned down on the palette, all you need to do is start applying it to the areas that we originally base coated with this colour. So if you look at the helmet, for example, it's areas like this, but we're looking for recesses where we need to avoid letting the paint drop into the darkest areas. So for example, on the top of the helmet, just following the dome of it around here, but as we get to that ridge in the centre, it's going to keep the colour out from that deepest area there. And next to these little bars on the back, again, it's not going quite into the corner where it meets those. And this way, we clean that colour up, but we retain the shading that we got from that wash. With that bone white armour cleaned up, we can now move on to doing the same thing on the other two heraldic colours. So this is going to be that red and blue. So we'll start out with the red. For both of these is going to be a case of returning to those original colours. So for the red, it's going to be Sanguine Scarlet here, and then for the blue, it's going to be Stegodon Scale Green. 
We'll start out with Sanguine Scarlet, and for this application I'm going to go for a really small brush. I've decided to go right down to a size double zero here, so a really small, really fine brush because these details are quite small now, so having a brush like this is going to help out with it. But the process is going to be just the same as what we did with that bone armour just a moment ago, where we're looking for the flatter areas and want to avoid the recesses. So on this plate here, that means not quite going up to that hinge that we've got at the top of the panel around there, and also being careful of this rivet just here and working our way around it, leaving it darker in the corners. With that done on the red, it's then time to move on to the blue with some Stegged on Scale Green, and the process here is exactly the same, looking for those recesses and carefully avoiding them. With that layering complete, you can see all the armour is now much cleaner and neater, so we can move on to highlighting. And in this case, what we should do is start out with the main colour, which is that bone white armour. In this case, the highlight I used to use on my knights was a pure white. So I'm going to do that here with some white star, applied using a really small brush. I've gone down to my size double zero for this one, because here I'm just going to be doing an edge highlight on all these panels. So it's a matter of making sure the paint's thinned down correctly on the palette, so it's nice and smooth there like that, and then just make sure that the brush is loaded correctly without loads of paint on there, and it's time to start looking for all those edges. And on these miniatures, quite a lot of them can be caught using the side of the brush, just approaching it around about 45 degrees in the flat and just skimming along, such as on the top of the visor just here. This way it's really easy to get a sharp, neat highlight really quickly. Now it's not always possible, sometimes the tip of the brush is needed, and in this case what I like to do is brace the model so I'm looking down the length of the brush and making sure it's nice and steady between both my hands, and then this downward motion start applying those lines onto those edges, such as that ridge just there on top of the helmet. With that, the bone white armour is highlighted, so we can move on to highlighting those other colours, and we'll start out with the red here, and for this it's just a matter of applying a bright red in the same method as what we just did on that white there. So in this case I'm going to use some demon red, applied again using the size double zero brush, and it's a matter of getting this set up in just the same way, making sure it's nice and smooth but not too thin. So I bring it down to about this point here so it stays under control as we apply it, and then it's time to start looking for all the red details. So these red bits of armour, we were looking to edge highlight in the same way as what we did on that bone, so using the side of the brush where possible just to skim along those edges. With that highlight applied to the red, those details are standing out nicely too. You can see there on the shoulders and also the insides of the legs there. So now we can move on to doing the same thing on a few other colours. We'll start out with that blue armour. In this case, what I'm going to go for is some Thunderhawk blue. And then once that's done, it's time to highlight the undersuit. And in this case, we'll need a dark grey. So I'm going to use some Dungeon Stone grey for this. And finally, it's time to highlight that brown. And here I'm going to use some Dry Rust brown. But first of all, it's time to highlight the blue. And Thunderhawk blue is the one I like to use here. And to apply this, and once again going for the size double zero brush because the application is identical to what we've just done with that red and with the bone white as well. So again, just make sure the paint's thinned down so it's at the right consistency, making sure it's nice and smooth but not too running. So there we go. And then it's a matter of applying this onto those blue panels, such as the one on the shoulder here, again using the side of the brush where possible. Next up it's time to highlight that black undersuit, and here we need a dark grey. So I'm using some Dungeon Stone grey, and in the case of fabric like this, it's now a matter of looking for the peaks and the creases of the fabric, such as this one here, and just in this downward sweeping motion, just following along each one. So again, these creases just here, and that one right there. Also we've got some raised up ridges that appear on this suit, such as along here, and it's a good time to pick this out as well. And finally, we can move on to some dry rust brown, which I'm going to use to highlight all the brown details. And for the solid things, such as the rifle here, I'm looking for an edge highlight like with the armour, looking for those corners such as along there. And then when it comes to softer details like the boots, here I'm looking for any creases and parts that stand out, such as just the tip just along here. And with that, all those colours are highlighted, so we can move on to highlighting the metallics. And here I'm going to start out with the brass, for which I'm going to be using some glistening gold for a nice bright shine to it. And then for the silver, I want a bright silver. So I'm going to use a mithril blade for this. But first of all, it's the gold, so some glistening gold. And to apply this, I'm still going to go for the small brush, that size double zero once again. And here I'm looking for all edges and corners on these gold details and just need to pick them out. So for example, the part that we've got here on the stock of the rifle, I'm just going to again look, use the side of my brush and just skim along those edges just to get a nice sharp highlight on these areas. <laughs> 
And finally, it's time to highlight the silver details of the bright silver. So here I'm using some mithril blade, once again looking for any edges we can find, such as along here. And also at this stage, we have a great opportunity to pick out the rims of the eye lenses too. And with that, all the highlights are finished, so it's time to move in for some small little details. And we'll start out with that lamp. For this, what we need is a nice bright yellow. So I'm going to use some skulker yellow here. And all we've got to do, using your small brush, so once again I'm using my size double zero here, all we need to do is just dot some of this colour in onto the glass. So make sure you thin it down as usual, and just be careful not to lose the tip in your brush. Just make sure you just twist the bristles together to get that point. And with this, then what we can do is just work the colour into the recesses between the bars on the lamp. So just around here, what you've got to do is just drop the yellow into these areas here. And with that lamp done, we can now move on to the lenses. And in this case, what I want to go for is a glowing red lens here to match the night. So what I'm going to do is start out with a dark red. I'm going to use some Asmodeus red for this. Then we want to go to a bright red. So we're going to use some Demon red and then finish off with a nice bright orange. So in this case, I'm going to use some orange flare. But I'm going to be starting out with Asmodeus red. And again, I'm going for the small brush to apply this because of course it is going to be things like eyes. So quite small details now. Don't need very much of this, but what you've got to do is just make sure you keep that nice point on your brush and then start looking for these features. And so when it comes to the eyes to begin with on these lenses here, I'm just going to run this into the main part of it going right up to that silver trim. So just running it into areas like that. But I'm also keeping an eye out for any other lenses such as this one in here. Next up, it's time for a bright red. So here I'm using some demon red. And with this, first of all, on the eye lenses, I'm looking for a line that's a little bit closer towards the middle of each one, leaving the darker red still showing around the outside. So just in there, for example, when it comes to the lenses, though, it's more of a dot, again, keeping it darker red around the outside, but focusing more towards the middle. And finally, we need a bright orange. So here I'm using some orange flare, and with this it's just a matter of putting a little bit of this into the middle of each eye lens and each round lens as well. So just a small amount around here. With those lenses now complete, the next small detail is going to be those glowing blue coils that I wanted to put in on the rifle to make it appear like a really ancient piece of architect that's really actually quite advanced. And to do this, what we need first is a dark blue. I'm going to use some abyss blue for this, and to apply it, I'm going to stick to the small brush because this detail is quite small. So what we've got to do is get some of this thinned and ready, and then pick out these features. What I'm looking at is these coils right in the middle of the rifle just here, and it's just a matter of blocking them in at this stage, making sure to get the colour into the recesses as well. With the base coat done, it's then time to put some brighter blues on here. And what I want to do is do a style that kind of matches what the Skitari have in the way they have their coils painted. And if you think of it, imagine like a glowing coil that's actually got the glow coming from the coils themselves as opposed to the interior of the gun. So I'm looking at the raised up areas to pick out here. So what I'm going to go for, first of all, is some Cursed Blue, followed by the appropriate named Raygun Glow, and then we need a pure white. So I'm going to use some white star to finish off. But first of all, what we need is some Cursed Blue. To apply it, I'm still going to use the small brush, and with this colour, I'm looking to mostly pick out the raised up parts of the coils. It's okay if some of the recesses get caught with this colour, but I want to try and keep that relatively low, essentially. So with the paint ready, we can start picking out these parts, and it's a matter of approaching with the side of the brush and skimming along them like this so that the colour picks out those raised areas there like that. With that done, we can then move on to a brighter blue. So here I'm using some Raygun Glow, and this is the same motion, just skimming it along, but a little bit lighter this time and more focused towards the top of the gun. And finally, we just need a white. So here I'm using some white star, and with this, it's just a matter of a very light flick across the top of these coils just to finish them off. And with those small details now painted, it's time to move on to some finishing touches, which are going to be some heraldic designs, because of course this is going to be a guy serving an imperial knight. And what I thought would be quite cool is have some of the markings here reflect some of the markings of a particular noble, as if he's in service to that guy, so one of his men at arms. So I've picked one of my knights out. Allow me to introduce you here to Sir Tristor, parting Lance of Flame. And this is the knight I'm talking about. And the markings I mean are the ones up here, 
and up here. So I'm going to start out with this one, which is going to be a white chevron. I'm going to leave these swords off because I quite like the idea of having a cut down version of the soldier here. So the actual heraldry in its full glory is on the suit of armor, whereas the sort of more minor version is going to be on the soldier. So just a chevron really. But then also what I want to do is do a little squiggle later on to represent this dragon on the other shoulder. Now bear in mind, some of these will appear in the legs too. So I'm going to put the chevron on its knee, just like we got down here too. So to do this, to start out with that chevron, what I need is a pure white. So I'm going to use some white star for this. And to apply it, I'm going for the small brush once more, so the size double zero. And the idea here is just to freehand this marking onto those areas of the armor. So with that paint thinned down so it's nice and inky, it's time to start doing that. And I'm looking at these two locations. So we've got the shoulder up there where it's blue and also the knee down here. And to do the chevron, it's just a matter of painting two straight lines. So we're going to start on this side, just painting downwards there like that. And once that's on there, we can flip around to the other side and do the same thing. I'm just going to repeat this process on the shoulder as well. And with that done, the last thing to paint on is going to be a representation of the dragon symbol here of the house. So to do this, all I'm going to do is a little squiggle first of all, almost like an S-like shape that loosely follows the serpentine shape of the dragon here. I'm keeping it quite faint so I can go over it later to make it a bit stronger. But with that on there, it's then time to add a wing onto the back. So I'm just going to bulk out the back just there and bring the wing up there. And then I can start filling this out to get more of an appearance of the dragon with its face there. And I can start adding the limbs. Now with this done, I'm then going to add some transfers. My plan is to use the wing designs that come on the Solar Auxilia transfer sheet, just cut in half to have the wing design on the back there like how the knights do, and then it's time to base the miniature. And in this case, I'm going to go for a grasslands base to match my knight suits of armor. And with that base now fully painted, this infantryman is complete and ready to do battle in service of his knightly house. So in this video, we hope you've given you some ideas if you're collecting Imperial Knights, because when it comes to doing things like Mechanic and well Knights, it's quite easy just to use Skitari for them. But when it comes to the Imperial Houses, doing something like this can be a lot of fun. And what I'd do is use all the rules for the Astra Militarum for them, but ask my opponent if it's okay if I use things like Rhinos instead of Chimeras just to suit that expeditionary fleet theme a little bit more. And I just avoid using tanks and instead just have the Knights to provide all the heavy support. But anyway, I hope it's given you some ideas, and well, we'll see you again very soon.